YouTube and welcome back to the African Allure Outdoors. So today I want to talk to you about getting into bow hunting or those of you that are already in bow hunting that maybe just want a few tips from the start that you may have missed. Because some of us took a crash course in getting into bows without taking too much advice. Typical South Africans, we throw away the manual and we just climb in there and get stuck in. So this is really just a couple of few basic pointers for when you want to get into it. I often suggest to people that they maybe look at second hand bows. Um, the reason I say that is that bow hunting is not for everyone. Um, maybe you just don't like it, maybe it's too technical, maybe it's too difficult. Um, bow hunting might be like golf to some people. I'm useless at golf, although my father is a scratch golfer. <laughs> I hate it, I just can't get over that learning curve. But anyway, let's get back to the bows. So there's a few things that you need to start out with and the one is you need to find out whether you're left eye dominant or right eye dominant. They talk about your master eye. So your master eye will automatically over, override your weak eye every time. Now I'm right eye dominant or uh, my right eye is my master eye. How do I test that? They call it the diamond test. So what you would do is you would stand back you would uh, pick a point in front of you. In this case, I'm going to be using the camera and I would put my hands out in a diamond like that and I would pull it back to my face. And I'm right eye dominant, so my hands will automatically go back to my right eye. Whereas a left eye dominant person would go to the left eye. Because I'm right eye dominant, I shoot a right hand bow my strength arm is going to be here and I'm going to be sighting from my right eye. There are many people that do shoot bows, right hand bows that are left eye dominant and they've just learned their way around it. But if you're starting out and you are actually right eye but you're left eye dominant, my suggestion is to you get a left hand bow, you don't know any better and start learning the left hand bow process. It's easy. Those of you that are lefties as well, um, there's not a wide selection of bows, very much like in my case where I'm just out of the normal spec in terms of draw length. The options are not many, but when you find a second hand bow, left hand shooters tend to find cheaper bows. So you, you do have a benefit. My other suggestion to you is that if you're going to buy a second hand bow, is that uh, you maybe look at models that are post 2012. Uh, the reason I say that is the technology of bows improves every year. Every year the bows get a little bit faster, the development is better, and I mean some of the flagship bows from this year are just absolutely amazing. Um, sadly, they're not in my draw length. I'm also not uh, sponsored by any of these big companies or endorsed by them. So I would suggest to you that rather go for a name brand bow, be it a Matthews, a Hoyt, a Bowtech, a Bear, one of the bigger name brands. And the reason I say that is that uh, the backup service in South Africa is better. And the other thing is, is that you can get parts and you know, basically just dealer services priority. Um, the next thing that we're going to cover is we're going to cover uh, your drawing. That's the next most important thing before you even start looking for a bow. And the best and primary way to do that would be to go to a bow shop and get yourself measured up. Um, but I'm going to show you two simple ways that you can do it at home. You can, you can Google these things or YouTube them. You'll find them on YouTube. But these are the most two efficient ways that have worked for me. Um, between the two measurements, I have a half an inch difference. Uh, remember that we live in a uh, metric country. Uh, but bows are manufactured mainly in the US, so everything is imperial. So you're going to be talking about inches and yards and all those good things, you know. So the ways to measure your draw length, very, very simple. The one is to get your Minister of um, Sports and Recreation or a good mate if you don't have one of those ministers. And what you do is you spread your arms out from side to side and get myself in like so straight out level with your shoulders and what you do is you get them to put a tape from the tip of your one finger in a straight line across your back to the tip of your other finger 
and then what you do is you divide that by 2.5 and that's going to give you your approximate draw length now on that measurement i get 31 and a half um, so it is quite accurate it'll get you within a half an inch of where you need to be um, the other method is to take an arrow in uh, my case i don't have an arrow i have our second uh, vehicle from home and uh, what you want to do is you want to put the base of this or the base of the knock at the point where your neck meets your chest so to demonstrate we're going to put that there like that you're going to stretch your hands out and you are going to mark where your your uh, fingers finish and you keep that mark and then uh, if you're a professional hunter you always have a whole shoal of tapes that are both in centimeters and inches so we're going to measure this one from my mark basically to the end and this gives me 32 and a quarter inches um, on that measurement so now I've determined that my draw length is approximately 32 you will take and you'll find that most bows have a flexibility a little bit you'll, you'll tend to find that a 28 inch bow will probably have a flexibility of one inch one inch either side so it's just important to know what your draw length is then you can look for a bow that is suited towards your draw length and you're starting in the right place dominant eye your draw length and then of course then you start looking for a bow and in the next video what we will do is we will cover a little bit more about uh, what to look for in a second hand bow um, what are the key things that can potentially make your shooting very difficult and uh, might actually cause you bigger problems down the road and what you expect i've got a bow that's hanging up here this is a second hand bow that i bought for my kids my kids are aged almost five and uh, three years old they are a bit young i'm expecting that they will only start shooting bow at around the age of six um, this is a matthews genesis i bought it for a really a very good price and i use it for bow fishing here on the on, on the ranch sometimes um, my missus uses it a little bit although she's a lefty this is a right hand bow and um, i just want to show you that the bow is maxed out it's 20 i think it's maxed out to 27 inches or so and i'm a 32 inch draw so you need to have an anchor point now some people anchor behind their ears some people anchor on the joy line some anchor in the corner of the mouth for me i anchor in the corner of the mouth um, this bow is turned down so it is very weak so i don't need to use a wrist release so i can actually pull this pretty much with one finger and remember just never ever dry fire a bow even one that's got such low poundage like this but uh, when you pull a bow you want to have your arm slightly bent over here at the elbow of course it just makes it helps with the clearance of the thing and you want to be able to reach your draw point and you can see my draw point is about here so i'm far away from where i need to be with a bow um but it is a good bow this is an old bow it is a second hand bow as i said and uh, it, it it works very very well um so anyway thanks for watching this video i hope you enjoyed it i hope you learned a little bit and uh, stick for us stick with us for another one if you like the videos please like and subscribe down below and uh, leave us a comment tell me if you want to see more about sort of setting your bows up i am going to go more into my equipment and what i use and what works for me and uh, yeah stay tuned thanks folks cheers